What's up guys? It's Liz. I am here in Austin, Texas, hence the, uh, yeah. this situation, <laughs> for Paleo FX and I ran into my friend Danny J and I wanted her to, to bring her on today to talk to you guys about what is adrenal fatigue and how this can affect you. So, welcome. Thank you. I'm Thank so excited. You. I don't like love talking about this because it's a, such a frustrating topic, but I love being able to give people hope if they're struggling. Totally. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know a whole lot about adrenal fatigue and the ins and outs of it. I yeah. know the basics of it. Yeah. But tell us a little bit out there for people who may not know. Yeah. This is something that really particularly affects women, yes? Yeah, well, I wouldn't say necessarily women, but I, I, I'm not sure, to be honest, about the demographics, but particularly in the fitness industry, whether um, people who are like instructors, fitness instructors, CrossFit athletes, or somebody who's doing physique competitions. And you might have heard the terms metabolic damage, adrenal fatigue. I would say there's even some like doctors that say adrenal fatigue is not a real thing. And I'm here to tell you like it's a real, real thing. But there's naturopaths who call it one thing and there's other doctors who call it another thing. So you might have seen it as called metabolic damage. Mm. Um, or another another term I've seen is HPA axis dysfunction, which is the hypothalamus pituitary axis. So a lot Whoa. of big words. But really what it comes from is, and I, I, I had this happen to me because I was a physique competitor. So I did fitness competitions, bikini competitions for years and years and years. And I ended up like working so hard. I was, I mean, I was dieting. I was going to the gym three hours a day. I was doing all the things because I was just trying to look, you know, I was trying to get lip ripped, have a six pack. I was a personal trainer. I wanted to look the part of the fitness person. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of years of this, the things I was doing weren't working. So I kept having to do more. So soon, instead of doing one hour of cardio, I had to do two hours and then I had to do three just to maintain my level of like leanness. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I was eating so clean. Like, I mean, literally the same things every day, chicken, chicken broccoli, broccoli. <laughs> yeah, <I do. laughs> chicken, broccoli, egg whites. I mean, you, there's like a list of five things, right? And then doing all this, this cardio and doing all this weightlifting and I was starting to gain weight and I ended up gaining about 30 pounds in two months. Mm. And I was, you know, in my twenties and I remember even going to the doctor going, I don't know what's wrong with me. I gained all this weight and he goes, well, you just need to eat. Eat, he said, eat less and work out more. And I oh. left wanting to murder him because I'm like, I'm already working out three hours a day and I'm eating maybe 900 calories a day. How mm -hmm. could I eat less and work out more? And so I left with this frustration of like, I'm gaining, I'm gaining, my skin was breaking out. Mm -hmm. I was, I couldn't concentrate anymore. I used to love the gym and I remember one day going, to, like going to the gym, parking and sitting in the parking lot and just crying because I didn't want to go in, but I felt like if I didn't, then I was just gonna blow up, like mm. just gain weight because literally I felt like I was gaining weight without even trying. Mm. And I was doing lots and lots of research. I ended up working with some naturopaths and we re we realized that I had a lot of hormone imbalances and it was all caused from <laughs> just over stress. But the stress was caused by the exercise. Over exercising, under eating cause a lot of stress. It raises your cortisol. And what happens is your body uses um, a hormone called pregnenolone. And pregnenolone is used, it's basically a precursor for all your other hormones. So it makes thyroid hormone, it makes your sex hormones, your proge progesterone, estrogen. It makes, and it also makes cortisol. But when I was constantly high cortisol levels, the pregnenolone was being used to make all the cortisol, so it stopped making thyroid. It stopped making my estrogen, so I had no periods. I had, I was gaining all the weight because my thyroid was sluggish. So I kept thinking maybe I have a thyroid problem, maybe I had this other problem when really it was a larger issue. And so um, I'm just happy to say that I, one, I understand how frustrating it can be for someone who's like, Danny, I'm doing all the right things, I'm working out hard, I'm dieting, and yet it's not working. It's probably a hormone issue and it's likely a hormone issue. So the things that I had to do were so backwards to what I would have thought. I literally had to not uh, eat less and work out more. I actually had to stop training mm -hmm. and I stopped completely and eat more. So it was like the opposite. And of course I thought as soon as I did that, that I was going to just blow up and like gain so much weight. I gained a little bit at the beginning, but soon I just leveled off. Like it mm -hmm. stopped. Which was like, whew, that's what was really goodness. <laughs> but it also confused me because I remember the very first night I <laughs> I decided to eat spaghetti at 10 o'clock at night because I was like, ooh, carbs after seven is a bad thing. And I got up and I got on the scale the next morning and I didn't gain any weight and I was like, this is interesting. <laughs> so uh, it's taught me, you know, over the course of the last few years of healing from this, 
is that we have to listen to our bodies and our bodies are really trying to tell us something. So if you're like following diets and you're trying to look a certain way and you're doing all the right things or you see a fitness model online and you're like, I'm following her diet and it's not working for you, mm -hmm. there may be some other things going on and it's really, you really need to address your own physiology and also realize that you could do all the right things, but if your hormones are off, it's not going to. Like, you're just basically running into a wall. Totally. Yeah, and becoming counterproductive. Totally. Yeah. Totally. So what are some of the warning signs that they could look out for? If you are, say you are in the yeah. same situation, maybe you are working out all the time, you're eating really well, um, but still this, this, I don't like to use a scale as a measurement, yeah. you guys know that, yeah. but nothing is budging, your clothes are still not fitting yeah. up the way you want them to fit. What are some of the warning signs that, that you can look out to know, okay, yeah. I should probably go see a doctor about adrenal fatigue, this could be a risk factor yeah. for me. Warning signs, a big thing is if your period stops, you know, that's, and you know what's hard is sometimes you're like, it kind of is like, this is great, who wants to have their period? <laughs> I was like, oh, this is good, but um, it was obviously, it's not good because what I noticed one of the things that happened when my period stopped, my, I hate to, it's hard to explain unless it happened, but I felt like my bones were always aching. Mm. And I found out that when you stop, when you lose your period, your body starts to stop, uh, take calcium out of your bones. Mm. So my bones were hurting all the time, so I was really achy, very fatigued. Um, a big thing is fatigue like middle of the day, so like it, like between 1 and 4, like this crash. Mm. So if you feel like at, right after lunch you need like a gallon of coffee to get through the day, that could be a big, that could be definitely a warning sign. Um, and this can go one way or another. Sometimes people are really wired, they call it wired but tired. So you're like really exhausted but you can't go to sleep. Mm. So you might like not be able to wake up in the morning, but then you can't go to sleep at night and you're like, why can't I sleep? I've been exhausted all day. Mm. So there's, um, and there's levels to adrenal fatigue. So at the beginning you have more wired but tired. By the end where you're really, really crashing, you're dead tired all the time. There's wow. just like not a lot you can do. Yeah. Another thing is your performance. So I would be going to the gym and I could, you know, I used to be able to do like shoulder presses with 20 pounds. I got to the point where I'd pick up a five pound dumbbell and I could barely lift it. Wow. I was just so tired and so weak. Wow. Um, and something else might be just weight gain where you feel like it's, you feel like you're eating clean and you're eating well and you're not doing anything crazy but you're gaining weight anyway. Yeah. Um, and then other thyroid issues and so this is where things can get tricky because um, you might have read things about low thyroid like being cold all the time, um, losing your hair, having like skin, like breakouts, skin issues. Mm -hmm. so those are some warning signs too. Very cool. This is super useful information. Thank you for sharing this yeah. because I'm sure there are many people who are eventually going to watch this over the years that it's up on YouTube. Yeah that have experienced this and many women especially that don't know that those are the things they should look out for. So thank you for, yeah. for sharing that. For those of you who don't know, I actually have been a follow of yours for literally years. She was one of my, you were one of my first fitness <laughs> influencer people that I looked up to. She, back in the day you had the study buddies and you've moved on since then to some other things. So tell us yeah. more about what it is that you're doing now because clearly that was like, what a, what a crazy way to yeah. get started in the fitness <laughs> industry and now you've kind of transformed and you're all about living your best life now and not worrying yeah. so much about what the, the aesthetics of things are, just yeah. more focused on making sure your body feels good, you are healthy, you are happy, and you are doing the things in this life that you want to do. You're living your best life. So tell us more about yeah. Sweaty Betty's and how you got to here and what you're doing now. Yeah, so Sweaty Betty's, if you go on YouTube, you'll see some old workout videos I did. Um, and I, I do, a, a, I mean, literally 2011, I did like a confession why this is going on. Like, I don't know what's happening to my body and I was I just upset that. of like, I know what's happening, but I have to talk about it because nobody was talking about it. Yeah. And I went through this process of trying to heal myself, but one of the big things I had was I had so much of my identity wrapped around how I looked. So I had this, this idea that people only wanted to hear from me because I was fit and I was mm -hmm. in shape and they would only want to look at me if I had abs and they would only care what I had to say if I was this fitness person. And so when I gained the weight, I started to lose my identity of like, I'm not fit girl anymore mm. and I didn't look bad but in my mind I thought I looked like I shouldn't be allowed and it on camera or anything and so <laughs> it's so sad but it's a real yeah. thing like in the fitness industry especially as a woman there is a lot of pressure to make sure that your body is like carved and ripped all, all the time. time yeah which is not necessarily the healthiest approach because yeah. as women we do need a little bit more body fat that yeah. com competition diets are like one of the craziest things because you're putting your body through these highs and lows, these spikes, and yeah. you're just going extreme training back to like normal life or whatever. And yeah. people, it's crazy. But anyway, keep going. Yeah. So, I mean, it was literally where I felt because I was kind of in the public eye, I needed to look a certain way. And I was 
getting depressed, like massive depression mm-hmm. and this identity crisis of if I'm not a fitness person, then who am I? Like mm-hmm. my degree was in physical education. I've learned about fitness. This is all I've known and done. And now I'm, I'm struggling with my weight. I'm supposed to be a trainer to help people lose weight and yet I'm gaining weight. So mm-hmm. I felt like a fraud mm-hmm. and I went through this, this really, um, kind of transformation personally and really more like spiritually and mentally because I started to ask myself, okay, if my best friend gained 20 pounds, would I stop talking to her? Mm. And I was like, no. And so I started to think, okay, people like me for me, not just because I'm sweaty buddies or I'm the fitness girl. So I had to really start to find things that I could do that were outside of fitness that gave me fulfillment and that also made me feel like I was having a purpose besides just being a a model or something. Mm -hmm. And so I started to read more books. I started to go on more walks. I started to like do things that fulfill me on the inside. And now I really start, I really want to help more women like rewrite their story. Sometimes we have an idea of what things should look like. We have an idea of how our life should be. Maybe like we go to college and then we get a job and then we get married and then we have kids and we do everything in the right order. And maybe something in your life switches and that doesn't happen for you. Mm. And how you can turn that around and go, okay, maybe that's not what my life was supposed to be and I'm gonna change that and make it look how I want it to look. Mm. And so my life has taken a lot of twists and turns. And I think that you can literally, I mean, our, our stories are being written. I mean, I really think you can just go, okay, plot twist, and here's how it's going to go now. So I like to help women in that way. I do it a lot with money, you know, finances. A lot of times people will get stuck in their, you know, they think if I didn't go to school, I can't make a, I can't make a living, or they maybe want to get out of their jobs and create like a business or do something like this. Like, I'm going to be an influencer, but I don't have the skills, or I'm not... You know, we make up these stories in our head. And mm-hmm. so literally just to recognize that it's all stories. It's all stories we tell ourselves. Nothing is necessarily true. There is there is like your truth and then there's the truth. And that's not always the same thing. Correct. Yeah. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. I work a lot online. I work with a lot of women. I do workshops. Um, I had an event in Vegas last year where we just really talked about like your spiritual life, your mental life, your physical life, and just like the whole person of how you can live your best life in all of those areas. Very cool. So we'll make sure to link up all of Danny J's stuff down below in the description box. Is there anything else you want to add for women out there who may be struggling with adrenal fatigue? Like any last words? You yeah. Have? You know what? I do have a, a guide. There's a, it's called 14 day adrenal reset and you can get that guide. And I think the biggest thing is to be kind and gentle with yourself mm. and know that you can get out of it. The hardest thing I think for me was to have the patience to realize it's going to take time, mm-hmm. but the time's going to pass anyway. And to realize that this can actually be a gift for you to learn more about. And I know it's like, it sounds so BS in the middle of it. It's so frustrating. So just mm-hmm. know that your frustration is felt, but also just to give you hope that you can get through it. Very cool. I love it. And if she could do it, anyone can do it. Yes. Right? <laughs> so, so true. All right. Thanks so much for joining us here yeah, today, Danny. Make sure that you guys, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment down below so that I know. If you have any questions about adrenal fatigue or you feel like you may be experiencing that, feel free to drop a comment. There are millions, I'm sure, of oh, yeah. women that are affected by yeah. this scenario. So don't feel like you're alone, but definitely do start looking for more information. I'll make sure to link that program up down in the description box for you. And make sure you subscribe for more videos every single week from Super Sister Fitness. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.